Welcome to uh, WooCommerce Troubleshooting Basics. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I'm Sarah and I describe myself as an internet wizard because somebody told me that I was allowed to pick my own job title. So I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. Um, I've been using WordPress for many years and my most recent like internet wizard quest was to work with WooCommerce. So I wanted to like share what I've learned. I've been working for Prosperous and I made them that party parrot emoji, which is awesome. It's like the best thing I've done there. Uh, so yeah, I usually try not to break things and fix them instead, but like sometimes when you're trying to fix things, you break them. So as long as you fix them all in the end, it's fine. So who here has a WooCommerce store? And who here has had something break on the WooCommerce store? Okay, that's significantly less people, that's awesome. So we have some quest goals today since um, I'm an internet wizard. So, you know, you can all come along on the quest. You gotta have goals. So the first one is learning about WooCommerce troubleshooting and all that entails. The second one is to acquire more tools to fix all the things because these tools will like help you fix general WordPress issues, not just WooCommerce, but I find them particularly helpful, helpful for WooCommerce. And Probably most importantly for me is I want you to feel confident in your ability to troubleshoot. You don't need to be a developer to troubleshoot and figure out problems um, on like where your WordPress site or WooCommerce site, you just need to have the right tools and kind of you know, know what to do. So the first thing uh, I'm gonna talk about is backups and staging site because if you have those two things, it's okay if you break everything. But you look so happy drinking their coffee. So first we're gonna talk about backups. They are really important because they take a snapshot of your website, so if something goes horribly wrong, you can just restore the backup and start over. So I'm gonna get into how you create a backup. So a lot of hosts, especially if they are WordPress specific or like specialize in WordPress hosting, uh, they may have a tool to do this already where like you can just go into uh, I think some of them might have it in the WordPress backend, but like maybe in cPanel where you can just be like, I wanna make a backup, you just click it, it does it. Uh, they may already be doing this for you. They may have a service where they just make backups for you, which is awesome because then you can be like, oh no, I messed it up and they've already taken care of it for you. Um, if you don't have either of those options, there's all kinds of plugins on WordPress.org that will do this for you. Uh, it's built into Jetpack, and then I picked like a few different of the top search results on WordPress.org. So Updraft Plus, All in One, WP Migration. There's like 80 billion of them. The next thing is staging sites, and there was a talk about staging sites yesterday. Did everyone go to that? Cool. So you won't learn a lot here, but you probably learned a lot yesterday. <laughs> so a staging site, for those who don't know, is a clone of your live site, and it's like a total exact copy, which is really useful. Again, your host may have a tool to do this already. Uh, there's some hosts that you can just click a button and it creates a staging site for you, which is really awesome and easy. Um, you can also get plugins to do this for you. Usually, if I'm doing this, I use WP Staging, because it's the one I'm most familiar with, but Again, there's all kinds of plugins on WordPress.org. Um, and staging sites, number one, are great for testing because you can like turn things off and on and not worry about it breaking your live site. It's just like, it's your playground to break things basically, which is what I like doing. So now we're gonna talk about what we call in my office uh, basic deductive troubleshooting, which if any of you have seen the IT crowd is essentially turning it off and on again but like the WordPress version. So, I have to check my notes. WooCommerce actually has a guide called WooCommerce Self-Service, which indicates the top three issues that happen with WooCommerce and how to find them. The Self-Service Guide is a really great place to start finding out what the problem is. The first thing on the list is make sure everything is up to date. Uh, plugins update all the time. Uh, they release security updates or bug fixes, or like it could be a bug, it could be a bug within their own plugin. It could be like a conflict with another plugin. But like if you see that the plugin needs to be updated, you should probably do that because it might take care of your problem. 
Uh, the next one is switching to a default theme like 2017 or storefront uh, to see if it's a theme conflict. Um, most commonly, I see this if someone's like, something is happening on the front end of my site that's broken, and I'm like, have you tried turning off the theme? Because the theme controls how the front end of your site looks, so. Um, some themes also include other, uh, like, WooCommerce layout specific stuff, so like, if you're having a cart issue, a theme, like, is a good place to check. Sometimes they do things in the back end, so yeah, it's, it's a good place to uh, take a look. Next one is disable all of your other plugins. So this is one that uh, if I hear like, it's doing this really weird thing and I don't know what's happening, I'm like, have you tried turning off all of your other plugins? And a lot of the time that actually fixes the issue because there's so many different plugins, they can all interact differently, so like you never know when there is a conflict and like plugin developers try and resolve them all, but you know, they can't catch them all, basically, unlike Pokemon. Um, the next thing, like, if basic deductive troubleshooting shooting doesn't work, is to check Google, which sounds a little silly, but it really works sometimes. Um, sometimes I'll ask in my work chat and be like, hey, has anyone seen this problem before? And someone will be like, oh, I Googled and I found this. And I was like, why didn't I Google it? So uh, specifically, like tips for Googling things, uh, Googling the error or a description of the problem helps. Like you don't have to put in a whole sentence, but like if you're like WooCommerce, cart is doing this or throwing this error message, like sometimes you'll get somewhere. Sometimes it'll lead you to a GitHub issue uh, on a repo for the plugin if it's like not a paid plugin or like it could lead you to, if it is a paid plugin, it could lead you to their site where they might have like an issue tracker and they're like, we're aware this is an issue, we're working on it. Uh, it can also lead you to the wordpress.org forums where lots of people have lots of information and you, like you might find someone where they were like, oh, I had this problem and this is how I fixed it and it's like, awesome. Um, I also frequently find myself on Stack Overflow for WordPress problems because they have an entire like WordPress section, which is pretty awesome. So uh, now probably the most important part is the examples section, because I fixed something once. So this first scenario, uh, like these are actual things that I fixed at my job because I work in support, so every day I get emails, people are like, this is broken, how do I fix it? So. I really like fixing things, so when I can just fix it, it's awesome. So this particular one, um, the orders are stuck in pending payment. So like this person, their orders were coming in, but they were stuck in pending payment. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna take a look. And like, when I'm looking, I look on their website to see the problem, and then usually I will just take a look on my own local site to see if I can reproduce the problem. So this is their site. So I took a look at the specific order that they indicated because I'll always be like, can you give me an example order so I know where to look? And the first thing I did was open the billing information by clicking the little like arrow next to billing, or I guess it's a pencil. And I noticed that like it said the payment method was Stripe but the transaction ID was missing and I was like, okay, well that's your problem. That's why you didn't get a payment because something happened and it didn't go through to Stripe. So then I decided to go through on their site and go through the checkout process. So I'm on the checkout process, I have something in my cart, I'm on Stripe, I am click continue to payment, and then I get on this screen. And at this point, I think, what if people didn't click the place order button? So I, clicked it, and that's when the modal window came up with where you actually put in the payment information. So I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna test this on my live site and see what happens. Or actually, no, I got ahead of myself. I searched, and it says, I found this in the Stripe documentation where uh, since version 4.1, the Stripe checkout modal pop-up flow has changed it now requires one additional step before the modal pop-up is shown. So before, it was different, which I will show you in a bit, but it's basically like, it's changed. So then I go through on my uh, local site, and what I do is I go back to version, uh, like a previous version of 4.1, which was like 4.0.7, I think, and I test it, so going through the checkout process, 
I click the pay button and the modal window comes up and I'm like, okay, so there's no way that this order could have been created without someone actually paying for it. So I was like, I'm pretty sure that like this is the problem. So it's like, all right, order received, awesome. Go check out the details. It has a transaction ID. I was like, all right. And then I was like, what do I tell this person? And I was like, had to sit there for a few minutes and kind of think about it. And ultimately, I came to the conclusion that the solution was to turn off straight mode, I'll cut checkout. This was someone who like, she was really stressed out. She was having a hard time because she had a lot of orders where they didn't go through and it was as simple as a setting. And it was just like, wow. So yeah, and that actually like, I had looked on GitHub too and there was uh, an issue on the repo where someone was like, can you change it back? And they were like, no. Because I guess it's like a Stripe thing, so yeah. So uh, when you turn off mode, I'll check out, this is what it is. The form's just inline so it can't create an order without payment. So the second scenario here is the country is not displaying on the order screen. And this is one that got passed around to a few different people on my team and I looked at it for five minutes and then somehow figured it out, which is like the best feeling. Um, so the specific description is when I look at an order, if it's from a customer in Switzerland, the country doesn't show in the order details. And I was like, that's a really strange problem and I wanna look at that. So the first thing I did was look at it on, their cust on the customer site. So, you know, you look at the billing details, there's no uh, Switzerland there. I open like the edit screen, I can see that Switzerland is the country. So I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna go test some things on my live site. So I went to my live site, or my local site, sorry, and I went to an order and I noticed that Canada wasn't displaying as the country. I was like, huh, that's weird. I wonder if that's on purpose. So I open that, Canada is there. So then I Googled and like just very brief WooCommerce same country display order is what I searched and it came up with a bunch of different results. The specific one that I found was this one, um, which like it was like the second result but I couldn't fit in the slide um, where it's like, it says, in recent versions of WooCommerce, the base country does not show in the order screens and it's basically describing the exact same issue that the client had. And this person's like, how do I fix it? So someone else says, I looked through the code and this is intended functionality um, to reduce clutter in the admin screen. And then they said, here's a code snippet for if you want that to display, you just add it to your functions.php, you're all good. So with those tools, you can now be an internet wizard. Well, you're a level one internet wizard, so you might have to do some other stuff to like level up a little bit. But yeah, once you slay bugs, you like level up pretty fast, so it's pretty cool. Does anyone have any questions? Sure. Mm -hmm. So the question was, if you're using user switching, which is a plugin that you can use to switch to a different user on your site, um, it's holding the cart information. And have I run into that problem? I actually haven't, but a lot of the testing that I do is like, I didn't have anything in my cart to begin with. So, but yeah, I haven't personally run into that problem much. And it's not something that I've heard. Usually if things are being uh, like stuck in the cart, it's usually something to do with the theme. Like there's a couple specific themes that I've noticed a trend of that happens, so. Does anyone else have questions? Or does everyone else just want more cupcakes? All right, you have a question? Are there tools for pro uh, performance profiling? Um, I think there's some, like there's general like reporting, but I don't deal too much with like performance stuff. So yeah, there's none specific that I would recommend. Anyone else? Okay, thank you.